Coming up in this episode, we have ports of call in Marseille, Barcelona and Cadiz before heading into some sea days on our way back to Southampton. Bonjour from Marseille, France. It's a glorious morning at the port and a busy one. The port is quite a distance from the city centre today so we have another shuttle ride. We did wake up to an advisor on our TV screens about issues in Marseille so it's no GoPros or tech today, just us and our mobile phones. The port itself is very industrial and the coach transfer took approximately 30 minutes to get to the drop off location. Bonjour. Bonjour. We have finally made it into Marseille, France. Yes. So we've just um, had our croissant. Yes, it was very nice. It was a little sort of bakery just tucked away from the uh, main marina here. Yeah, it wasn't a, a tourist hotspot. It was um, one where all the locals kind of go and gather. Yeah. And only one euro for a really good croissant, which was really, really good. Just really went nice. around the corner on the main drag here. And um, like expensive. one croissant was about one euro 20. So yeah, made a saving there. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Pete didn't like the experience though, did you uh, Pete? No, it was a bit... Um, yeah, a bit, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, the coffee wasn't very nice either, but the croissant was amazing. Yeah, the croissant was amazing, so um, we're just having a wander around now into the shops, um, it's very busy. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's Pete says, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. After spending a few hours wandering around and taking in some sights, we decided to head back to the ship. Whilst there was some beautiful architecture and a nice marina, Marseille wasn't our favourite port of call. If we were to return here, we would probably book an excursion elsewhere. There are some parts which weren't clean and at times we didn't feel safe. However, this wasn't going to dampen our day. We took advantage of the quieter ship and headed to the top decks for some sunbathing and a dip in the beachcomber pool. So we're in a Venice dining room. We've just had a deep fried brie, lay, mushroom crumb, and we completely forgot to uh, take a video or a photo. And it was delicious. So what have you got, Pete? Um, uh, beef cheap. 
whiskey smoked beef chicken. Does it look alright? Yeah, it looks lovely. I have gammon with pineapple, fried egg, peas, and chunky chips. Looks alright. I have marmalade, frangipan, tart, mm. with a vanilla sauce. Vanilla sauce, and I have a trusted chocolate and vanilla ice cream. After dinner, we headed to the Headliners Theatre to watch Greatest Days, which was really good. Probably one of the best shows we've seen at sea, and a great addition to the lineup. That evening, we watched a beautiful sunset as we sailed away from Marseille. Good morning and welcome to Barcelona. Yeah. So first thing to do is listen to where you've got to get off and what deck. Because yeah. we almost went all the way to the bottom of the ship. Um, but it's actually deck six. Yeah, it's in the atrium. One thing to just note, they did advise all of us on the cruise magazines to be on the lookout for pickpockets. Barcelona is um, renowned for yeah. um, pickpockets apparently, so just make sure all your stuff is in your bags, locked away, secured, so it's not easily accessible. Yeah. Um, and things like mobiles, don't take large amounts of cash that you don't need with you, and you just take what you need with you for the day. short five minute journey ride into town. Um, this place. At the World Trade Centre, it, yeah, yeah. which is um, just opposite La Rambla. Just remember if you're with PO, um, if you're select fare, it's free, so they shouldn't charge you. If um, you are not a select fare, um, I think they scan your card and I think it's charged at four pounds yeah, each way. Yeah, today I think it was, they were five, so yeah. Um, just remember that each, where they drop you off is where they should pick you up. Apparently, we'll let you know later. Ho hopefully, there's a cable car. I don't know if you can see. It's probably one of the tax ones. Looks like the doors open on that one, Pete. You want to go on that one? No, but we are going to go on them. We're going to go on them. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're going to explore. Let's go. Hola. Welcome to Barcelona, Spain. The uh, metal sculptures represent the waves of the seas and it encourages you to walk under them and it uh, welcomes travellers by land and sea to the area. As we decided to head out early, the famous tree-lined La Rambla was really quiet and businesses were still setting up for the day. La Rambla is very popular for tourists visiting Barcelona and as a result it is also one of the locations pickpockets operate, so make sure you are being mindful if you visit. For our American fans out there, we have Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts and across the road, a Taco Bell. Oh, and a Ben and Jerry's ice cream shop. Oh, and they have a little kiosk selling scratch cards. There's another one there. We are off to the cathedral. I believe you say the Sagrada Familia. Don't quote me on that, but we're just gonna go for a nice wander up to there. About 30 minutes. So today we're getting about, and generally at our ports, um, by using Apple Maps because it can uh, come up on my watch without me having to get my phone out all the time and things like that. So it will tell me exactly which way to go. If 
without making it obvious. Me getting my phone out in what pocket that's in and things like that. So we are finally here at the Sagrada Familia. Um, it's taken us about an hour and a half in total to walk here. Um, yeah, it's not so busy at the moment. It is just literally 10 o'clock now. Um, we're just on the opposite side where quite a lot of people take photos and things. And I know it can get really crowded here, but um, it seems all right at the moment. There's sort of no one near us. Due to finish construction in another 30 years. I think it's longer than that. So just um, walking from the cathedral, we're heading back down towards the port, um, but we're going to, what's it called? Um, I don't know, it's, the, it's called the old, well, it's the old cable cars. We're going to go and ride them yep. up to the uh, sort of castle. Um, so it's about an hour's walk from the uh, cathedral, so. Yeah, just taking five miles, I think. Just taking in the sights as we go. We'll probably stop off at a cafe. Yeah, get a drink. Pete wants a Starbucks. <laughs> no, we might not go to a Starbucks. I have got a white coffee with ice. And I think, well, I just poured the ice, co the coffee, hot coffee into the ice and glass. I think that's what we're supposed to do. But essentially, I wanted an iced coffee, because so that's what I've got. Mm -hmm. <sighs> it's really nice coffee. One of the YouTubers we follow is called Sailing Zatara and they're a really great American family that was sailing around the world. Um, we're just walking through Barcelona and we've come across their boat. Yeah. So you want to say hello? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, go give them a follow as well because they're, they're brilliant. Yeah, Sailing Zatara. Um, great, great videos, um, great YouTubers. Yeah. So let's go to the cable car, which is yeah. literally over there. over there. We've been walking for nearly two hours. It is, I would say, nearly 30 degrees. Um, and it is hot as not It's hot. So if you come to Barcelona, make sure you're wearing sunscreen. I think that probably makes it worse. I remember <laughs> being in Florida once, putting sunscreen on, which was waterproof, and it basically just acted as a moisture capture. And I've got all these spots of water coming out of my head. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, make sure you're drinking plenty and plenty. Of, yeah. Safe. I always think this bit down here looks like Santa Monica. Wheel. So Pete, yeah. you know you said you wanted to go to Euro Disney. Yeah, I, I want to go. You need to take me. Yeah. There you go. Do you want to go? No. Can you go on it? No. <laughs> you looking forward to going on this, Pete? Uh, Pete? It's, it's high. It's Pete? High. Pete loves heights. He absolutely loves it, don't you? <sighs> I'm going to video every second of it. He'll be trembling. So that was 40 euro, which is uh, 36 pounds and 23 pence for a round trip. We've both got a return trip. So for two? Yeah. 20 euro each. Uh, it'll be all right. I don't know why we're doing this, Don. <laughs> The port cable cars, which first came into service in 1931, leave from the Tower of San Sebastian located next to Barcelona Beach and travel to the Montjuic Mountain. 
you will also notice a tower on the route situated at the World Trade Centre, which is the shuttle drop-off point, however this is no longer a stop on the route. For those film buffs you will also recognise the cable cars from Netflix, Bird Box Barcelona. Okay, so uh, we've done the first cable car, so it's the oldest one. Um, they pack you in, but it's all right. I do. I was really nervous, but actually, it was it was it was all right. Really good. I enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed it. So it was 19, 19 euros round. Twenty euros. Twenty each. euros each round trip. Um, so well, I think it's worth it. Safe climb in the mountain. Yeah. Um, so it's a ten minute walk to the, the next, next cable okay. car, which again you have to pay for. It's, yeah. uh, it's not included in that price, um, but this one's got like a nice cafe and a, a dining, a, a diving board and a pool or something like that. It's here yeah, or something. I think it's the old Olympic swimming pools. So, I mean, there's like a cafe bar attached to that, which is really close to the, um, the bottom of the next sky, um, cable cars. So we're going to go there, see if there's space, get a drink, and then we'll go up the cable cars yep. up to the um, castle museum. How many miles have we walked so far, please? Seven, I think. Seven. Seven miles to there. Okay, little tip. If you're coming to Barcelona or on a Mediterranean cruise, I would definitely invest in buying one of these battery-operated fans. Well worth it. And I recommend drinking an ice-cold sangria. So 20 to get up on the first one, 15 to get up on the second one, yeah. and then you've still got to pay the castle. For the castle. Expensive day out. And we're in. We're in. As you can see, these cable cars are a lot newer and you get amazing views over Barcelona. The top cable car station is located right next to Montjuic Castle. At 173 metres above the port, you get amazing views of the surrounding city and the port area.
So it's the castle, really, really nice views. And actually the outside, it's a really beautiful castle and it's massive. The yeah, zip heads inside, well, there was just nothing there. It was, um, it was really quite empty. They had a whole big old exhibit on the pandemic. Like there's nothing about the history of the castle or anything like that. So it's a bit disappointing. Um, we were going to stop, they've got a little cafe inside. But there's like no seating really available. We've got a selected amount of seats. So um, that could be an improvement as well. But, um, it's, yeah, it's, it was worth the journey. We've done it once. So after Barcelona, we um, went to the spa and we've relaxed. So now we want to come back to the room and we've ordered room service. So I've got the uh, club sandwich, Dom's got a pizza, and we're just gonna show you what it looks like. Good morning from onboard Arvia, somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. After an exhausting day on Barcelona, we had a nice lay-in and a spot of breakfast, taking advantage of a sea day. It was on this sea day that we decided to film our full ship tour. Head over to our channel if you want to see this beautiful ship from deck 3 all the way up to deck 19 as we explore all the venues and passenger areas on board. That evening we headed back to the clubhouse for our rescheduled game of bingo. Outrage. Unfortunately, it wasn't a winning day for me. For dinner that evening, we opted for our favourite, the keel and cow. Then, to make the most of the evening sun, we headed up to deck 19 for a round of mini golf. After watching a beautiful sunset, it was time to head in for that evening's entertainment, starting with Magnolia Road in the Headliners Theatre. To end our sea day, we caught a great aerial performance in the Grand Atrium. And good morning from Cadets. Cadets, yeah. I was about uh, to say, where are we? It's our last port of call. Sad, sad, sad time. Before we head back to Savan. Yeah. So, yeah, um, as you can see, we're able to just walk off the ship today. There's no shuttle. The shuttle's right in the town. Taking it to the town. The town's right there. So, um, lots of little shops, little um, streets. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to have a little explore. Yeah, let's go meet. So just inside the terminal you can get yourself a map um, of Cadiz and the tourist information and they're really um, helpful so he's literally pointed out a load of things to do in Cadiz on our own, um, some sites we can see where all the shopping areas are and things like that so it's really helpful. Okay for when you can just get out past the security at the port if you want the sightseeing buses they are just here.
Okay, so Pete spoke to someone in the tourist innovation and gave his directions to the shops. Yeah, I'm up and down that. So um, Pete's um, using his orienteering skills. What would help would be street signs. <laughs> Technology is coming out instead. You know you're in the main shopping area when you find a mobile phone shop. And we've got Vaderpin. Okay, I'm gonna If you're ever in Spain, head to El Hop. It's a really, really good shop. It does all sorts of bits and bobs. We're just going to walk this way a little bit. I think there's some Roman Colosseum stadium ruins, and then we'll go back in towards the shops. We just stopped off for a drink in a little, one of the local coffee shops, which is just behind us. Bazaar ca coffee. Bazaar coffee. Very Lovely. traditional Spanish local independent uh, yeah, cafe. Very much so, yeah. Where the uh, owner is shouting and there's lots of arguing They're going. Arguing inside. They're all arguing inside. They're all arguing. But yeah, it's um, entertaining to watch, and the yeah. Coca-Cola was good. Good yes. Coke. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, we're going to go and explore some more of the shops. Um, yeah, we're in this nice little square, aren't we? Yeah. People are yeah, it's a nice little area. There as well. It's not too commercialised here, is it? No, big time, big time. It's um, just very much a local kind of town, really. Yeah, quite chilled, quite, um, yeah. Right, let's uh, go and explore. Let's get Okay, so we're back at the port. We've had a few hours walking around the town, looking through the shops. Yeah, really nice. It's a really easy town for you just to literally get off and walk around, have a mooch around. Um, yeah, really nice. Yeah. But it's getting very warm, yes. isn't it? So, yeah, so uh, we get up to 30 this afternoon. Yeah, so um, we decided to come back to the ship. We're gonna get some lunch. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and hopefully it won't be so busy on there because quite a lot of people will go off to Seville from here. Yeah. Um, whereas we decided just to have a mooch around the town, so. So I think we might go to the, try the infinity pool at the back. Yes. It's always been busy, so we've uh, we thought we're going to try that. Hopefully today. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. today. Right. 
let's get back on board. Yeah. Back to Southampton. Yeah. The last time we get off, oh. off the ship. Next stop, oh, yeah, Southampton. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This might not work, but every time I just randomly, repetitively press the button that you want to get off on, it seems to go straight to it. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Is it real? Or are we just lucky? 14, 14. Deck 14. Voila. That's all I'm saying. So Pete, what have we bought in the shops today? We bought this little fan, and it looks really big against my head, but it's small, but it's small. Um, two speeds, and it fits right in your pocket. It's got a little, like, um, you know, like a pop socket almost, where you can attach it to your finger, and it's got a little lanyard. We got it from L Hop, 12 pounds. And I've also brought myself a nice new bag. Drawstring bag, which is upside down. Ta-da! It's got really nice insides all lined and that. It's really nice. Ooh! With a zip and pocket. Love it. That's all we brought. We're at the swimmer bar. Cheers! As we wave goodbye to Spain, we decided to give the olive grove another go for dinner. John Udry was back on the stage that evening for another brilliant show which we followed up with Etz in the Sky Dome before finishing the evening watching the moon shining over the sea. As we start our final two days at sea sailing back towards Southampton, we decided to have a relaxing morning chilling in the crow's nest before heading to Ripples to try their ice cream afternoon tea. We knew we were getting closer to home as the beautiful Mediterranean sun soon turned into the foggy Bay of Biscay. We were back in Sit Street Diner where we had a great starter. However, I can honestly say that our mains were a huge disappointment. They were cold, solid and bland, which is a shame as the venue is very well themed and has a great atmosphere.
That afternoon we headed to the Headliners Theatre for a talk all about Arvia, her build and a virtual tour of the bridge. Over the next 24 hours we were getting closer and closer to the UK. You knew this on the final day as people started to pack up and leave their suitcases outside their cabin. On the last night we joined the virtual queue on the PNO web app for the Keel and Cow. The great thing about joining the queue is that you can sit in a bar or in our case make some drinks whilst we got ready in the cabin until you are notified that your table is ready. So Pete, it's the last evening of the cruise. Yeah. Where have you decided to eat again? Keel and Cow. Keel and Cow. Now we had a bit of a disastrous lunch didn't we? The worst meal at sea I've ever had. And that's so, that. Tell us about it. Street diner. I don't even know. Words cannot do it justice how rubbish it was. The start was really nice. The um, name was revolting. Cold. Just weird. It was this bad wee thing. It was just weird and it was really harsh. And I couldn't even cut for it. It was horrible. I didn't eat it. I didn't eat it. It was cold. So we thought we'd come to a place where, and we had a look at the menu on the dining room, but it wasn't, it was just the normal stuff, there was nothing on the speciality stuff that we were going to like, so we thought we'd come here. So Pete, what have you ordered tonight? I'm having, uh, we're having a cheese melting sort of thing to start off, which is and then I ordered a sandwich steak. Yeah, so the Diane sauce. The Diane sauce. And I bought it a fillet steak with Diane sauce. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, we're always in the Keel and Cow, but it's such a good restaurant and well worth the small amount extra. It was then time for our final show in the Headliners Theatre. Well, good morning, everybody. We are back in a very grey and overcast Southampton, Southampton yeah. after an amazing cruise around the Med. Yeah. We just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos. Um, remember to give us a like, um, comment in the below, um, any messages, or are you going to the Mediterranean, or any questions about the cruise, and remember to give us a subscribe. Yes, thank you. Thank you very and much. And is just over there. So, so bye, 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 Arvia. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon for the next holiday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.